Well, hello there. I didn't see you come in. Make yourself at home. Have a drink. While I give some attention to some underappreciated characters and storylines that I personally love. And I hope you grow to love as well. Hey there, everybody, and welcome back. Today we are reading Vertigo Jam number one, the Swamp Thing part of it, which is called The Ghost in the Green. And the reason we're reading this instead of Swamp Thing 140 is because this little mini story that's in Vertigo Jam number one is actually the last thing that Nancy Collins wrote for Swamp Thing. So I figured we might as well collect it because it is kind of in continuity and it definitely involves Swamp Thing and where we left off with them in issue 138. And just a little catch up on what's been going on in the last couple issues. Swamp Thing is on his own once again. His wife has left him. His daughter has also been taken by the Parliament of Trees to be trained. And in the last issue, we saw him take over part of the swamp and all the plants were becoming reflections of his memories and growing like Abby's face and Tefe's face and Lady Jane's face and all this subconscious stuff that's going through his mind as well as Alec Holland's mind. And another Vertigo character named Black Orchid went through with her friend Cheryl because she was sensing a disturbance in the green and she decided to go help Swamp Thing out. So they made their way through all of Alec Holland and Swamp Thing's subconscious stuff, and eventually they made it to Swamp Thing in the center, and they were able to kind of talk him out of his malaise. And the last we saw him, he was walking around this crazy garden that he had grown, and he was just looking at all the memories and stuff that are growing out of the trees. So first things first with Vertigo Jam number one, we got the cover, we see on a street corner in front of a flower shop sits John Constantine, Animal Man, and Shade the Changing Man. And then next to them, we see Dorothy and Cliff from Doom Patrol walking. And then up on a balcony above them, we see Morpheus from Sandman and Kid Eternity. So what this issue is, is it is a collection of a bunch of short stories from the writers of those titles at the time in Vertigo Comics. And from what I can tell, they actually are in continuity. There was one for Hellblazer that I did for the Patreon. So that's kind of cool. And that's why we're doing this because I think it is in continuity. So we start off on the first page of the Swamp Thing story with Swamp Thing in the green, he's meditating and he's thinking about everything that's happened. And his narration says, she's gone. My wife is gone. Time and time again, I have come close to losing Abby through death or worse, but I never dreamed she would ever leave me of her own volition. I tried to explain why. I split myself into two separate beings, that I did it for her, but she refuses to understand. She claims that I've changed, that she no longer knows me. Perhaps she is correct, but all I know is that I still love her. So the Swamp Thing is sitting and meditating and kind of sulking and feeling bad for himself. Out of nowhere, someone says, oh please, Spare me the self-pity. And Swamp Thing gets all pissed off because he thought he was like in private time with his thoughts. So he turns around very angrily and looks like he's about to fight. And he says, who's there, friend or foe? But he doesn't see anything immediately. He just hears the voice say, must you be so specific? Very well. I'm a friend, I suppose. And Swamp Thing replies, show yourself then. And the voice replies, are you always this brusque with strangers? And Swamp Thing answers, only those who spy on me. Then in front of Swamp Thing on a vine that's just hovering in the green appears the ghostly shape of a man. And his body and clothes and everything are completely like Casper White, but he kind of looks like he's dressed in Renfair garb. And he says to Swamp Thing, point well taken. And we see the name of this issue is The Ghost in the Green. And it is written by Nancy A. Collins with art by Phil Hester and Kim DeMolder. So now that the ghost has revealed himself, Swamp Thing looks at him and says, who are you? Are you one of the parliament? Did Turu send you? And the ghost looks at him and replies, My name is Greensleeves, Earl King, and although I'm not one of the parliament, and shall never be, I'm still one of your kinfolk. And Swamp Thing doesn't quite get it, he's a little confused, and he asks, Then who and what are you? And Greensleeves replies, I'm a ghost, and I need your help. And Swamp Thing thinks for a second and says, I have used the green as an entrance to the land of the dead on several occasions, but I did not know that spirits could travel through it as well. And Greensleeves kind of smiles and says, well, normally they can't, but I'm far from your average spirit of the dead, my friend. 
You see, you're responsible, indirectly, for me being a ghost in the first place. Then we get a flashback of Greensleeves when he was a human. And we see Greensleeves is on stage playing guitar at some kind of concert, and his narration says, Three years ago, my name was Alan Hellstrom, and I was the lead guitarist for The Healing Faith. We were a young band, just getting started, but with a chance of making something of ourselves. Yep, we were going to be big rock and roll stars. We were on tour playing upstate Pennsylvania, sleeping at rest stops, living off Little Debbie snack cakes and yoo washing up in public restrooms, you know, paying our dues. Then everything changed. Then we see the band's tour van flip and fly off the road and burst into flames, and then we see a man running from that who's on fire, and the burning man runs into some water that's nearby. And if you remember from the Rick Veach run where they kind of solidified this, every Swamp Thing has to have the same death. So you have to burn, and then you have to run and hopefully be close to some sort of body of water where you can jump into, and then that sequence, if your name is close to Alec Holland's and the Parliament of the Green needs a new protector, that is how you become a Swamp Thing. So Alan's narration over this panel says, The next thing I know, I'm on fire, and this voice inside me is telling me to head for the water, the cool, cool water. But I'm sure you know the rest of the story by now. Fire, water, the initials AH. Then we cut from the flashback to Swamp Thing talking in the green to green sleeves, and Swamp Thing says, You were one of the replacements. The Parliament of the Trees chose when it thought me dead. But how is this possible? My daughter Tefe houses the spirit of the elemental that was to be my successor. Then we get some panels that show a burned body in a hospital room as nurses and doctors try to save the life of Alan Hellstrom. And it seems like Greensleeves is showing Swamp Thing these events because they're actually looking at the panels and Greensleeves narrates over these images. I'm not sure, but you see, Alan Hellstrom didn't die immediately. Paramedics were on the scene within minutes, and Hellstrom was taken to a hospital. He died temporarily while in the ambulance, but they managed to revive him. Hellstrom remains to this day in a coma, little more than a lump of human charcoal, capable of doing nothing but breathing, absorbing liquid nutrients, and excreting, all of it through tubes. Then the Swamp Thing asks, how does this explain your existence? And Greensleeves answers, I'm not completely sure to tell the truth. Am I the soul of Alan Hellstrom set free during that fleeting moment of death? Or am I the ghost of an elemental destined never to be born? Then we cut to some panels of Greensleeves after his soul was released and he's kind of flying through the green and he's going to talk to the parliament. And his narration continues over these panels saying, for three years I have traveled throughout the Green's vast life web, yet I am unable to manifest myself on the physical plane or manipulate vegetation like a true elemental. It's even worse than being a genuine ghost. At least then I'd have others of my kind to keep me company. I've even gone so far as to appeal to the Parliament for help in my dilemma, but they do not seem to hear me. Perhaps I am too much of a human spirit for them to even notice me. Then we get a panel of Swamp Thing and Abby and Tefe in the swamp, and they're kind of hanging out together, having a fun day. And we see behind them, there's the ghostly figure of Greensleeves. And his narration says, I've been trying to get your attention for several months, but you've always been preoccupied with your family until now. Then we cut to the present where Greensleeves is talking to Swamp Thing, and he says, Forgive me for being so rude earlier. But my patience has been wearing thin over the last few years. And as Greensleeve says this, we can see like a look of understanding on Swamp Thing's face. Then we cut to Linhart General Hospital, Paoli, Pennsylvania. And we're in the hospital room of Alan Hellstrom. And we see his body's all bandaged up. And he's, you know, obviously breathing through a tube. There's like a blood tube and also an IV on him. And we can even see that his arms are missing below the elbow. Then we see a woman come in the room and approach him and say, Alan? It's me, baby Lauren. I brought you some flowers, sweetheart. Roses, your favorite, remember? And of course, Alan doesn't say anything to her because he's in like a coma. And she just comes over as she cries and places the roses on top of Alan's bandaged chest. And then she walks out. And then we see the roses kind of begin to move and grow. Then the vines begin to pull out all the tubes that are hooked into Alan. And what's going on here is Swamp Thing is trying to help Alan out 
Kind of like how Matt Cable wanted Abby to pull the plug on him because he was in a coma too. But we do see as the air hose is pulled out from Alan's throat, his eyes are open and he's gasping. But maybe that is just a reaction because as Swamp Thing's Vine pulls the plug on all the equipment that's keeping him alive, we see the heart monitor that was beeping all of a sudden deadline. Then we cut back to the green with Swamp Thing and Green Sleeves, and Green Sleeves is crying and he says, Thank you. And Swamp Thing kind of gives him a bro hug. <laughs> and then uh, a portal opens up behind Green Sleeves, which I guess because, you know, his body isn't tethering him to this world, his soul is not stuck here anymore and he can pass on. And as he does, Swamp Thing says, You're welcome, my brother who never was. And as Green Sleeves disappears into the white light, Swamp Thing says, May we both know peace someday. And that, my friends, is the end of the Swamp Thing segment of Vertigo Jam number one. I know it's a shorter episode because this is just like a little mini story, but I did feel it had significance being the last thing that Nancy Collins wrote for Swamp Thing. And also, it's kind of a cool little touching story that definitely ties to the continuity of everything that's been going on with Swamp Thing. But don't worry, next week we're going to start with Swamp Thing issue 140, and I can't wait to dig into that stuff because I've never read it, so that should be super fun. And I hope you guys enjoyed the Nancy Collins run. It was a blast to me. There was a lot of ups and downs, specifically this last story arc with, you know, Swamp Thing's family leaving him kind of gave me a lot of different emotions, but personally, I do think it was a really good run, and I can't wait to see what Grant Morrison and Mark Miller have in store for us. So if you guys have any comments, questions, or suggestions, you can email me at planes, trains, and comic books, all one word at gmail.com. And until next time, remember to stay swampy. Swampy.